Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, before we get going, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, uh, leave a like, leave a comment below. And today's video is what to look for with a trail running shoe. So trail can mean running on uneven terrain uh, or within one run. So you can be running on hard pack, mud, rock, um, through streams. You can be running all over the place, but that's half the fun of trail running. You can make it whatever you want. So you get loads of different types of uh, trail shoes. You get like, trail shoes, fell shoes, shoes for ultras, door to trail shoes. So loads of different terms out there. Um, today we'll talk about most of those, but I'll probably use the word trail mostly, but I'm meaning basically shoes that you don't run on the road, well, not road shoes. So I'm hoping you find the following information useful. Um, do remember though, there's no fixed rule of what's right and wrong. So if you find something that's slightly different and works for you, that's great. Uh, we're all different. So trail shoes normally have more protection uh, than a road shoe and they'll use uh, tougher materials in the upper. On some shoes they'll use a rock plate in them uh, which basically means you'll get some protection from running over uneven rocks uh, poking through the bottom of the shoe. Not all shoes will have that but some of them will. You get things on the end of the shoe called uh, toe bumpers and they just help protect your toe um, stopping against rocks as well. So when you're out a trail you may be running over uh, different rocky terrain. I myself stub my toes quite often so I like to have a nice firm uh, toe bumper on the shoe. So with the fit um, the shoes need to offer the right support and be comfortable. Uh, it needs to be comfortable. If you don't find the shoes comfortable you're not going to want to put them on and then you're not going to go for a run, which is not what you want to do. You want to head out and go on that trail. Certain shoes will have a wider or narrower last. Uh, last is pretty much the, the shape which the, the shoe is made to. Um, everyone has different shaped feet. So don't always go by a review you've read in a magazine because the reviewer who's tried them on has got totally different feet to you. So the best thing to do, you could do a bit of research, um, find out what you think is going to be right but make sure you head to a shop and actually try them on your feet. Brands often have different fitting shoes within their range. Um, so don't always think that brand doesn't fit me because I've tried a shoe on and it was the wrong shape. It was too narrow or it was too wide. Often one brand will have loads of different options for you. So if you think you don't fit a particular brand, have you actually tried all of their models? Your heel and midfoot need to be locked in place uh, to avoid slipping in the shoe. So a shoe that's too short, uh, when you're running down a hill, you can bang your toes at the front uh, very easily because obviously the shoe's too short. Uh, but also if your shoe's too big and your foot's not held properly, your foot can slide to the front and bang into the front of the shoe as well. Uh, a lot of runners end up getting black toenails if that's the case if the shoe is too big or too small. So making sure that your shoe um, is held firmly over the midfoot and that the heel isn't moving about is pretty important. So the fit of the shoe lengthwise you can take the insole out of the shoe. On most shoes sometimes they're glued in uh, but usually it's just a tiny bit of glue you can just pop the insole out. So you take the insole out, stand on the insole, make sure your heel is at the back of where it should be and you're looking for approximately a finger's gap uh, between your um, furthest toe and the end of the end of the insole. And that should allow enough room. Always make sure you've got a good running sock on as well uh, when you're running with a trail shoe. Um, I prefer something slightly higher, so ankle bone at least um, kind of height. Anything lower, a uh, bit of debris, a uh, bit of gravel, stones, easily can pop in when you're running and um, they'll, they'll lift up at the back and they can go into your sock and just become really annoying. So a slightly higher sock, but a good sock does make a big difference, uh, can stop you having plenty of issues like blisters as well. 
So where will you be running? Uh, this and fit will be the most important factors when you're looking for a shoe. So are you going to be running along a forest trail or are you going to be running uphill over a rocky path? Um, depending on where you're going to be running will depend on your choice, choice of shoe. So grip. Um, so where you're running will determine what sort of grip you're going to need. So fell shoes will often have, well, they will have, they'll have more spaced out lugs. Uh, that will help shed the mud when you're running through the mud. I don't think you can see that. And they'll also have deeper lugs as well. So the depth in those lugs is fairly aggressive. You get more aggressive than this. Um, but the, the deeper the lug and the shape of the lug will offer different levels of grip. So this particular one is going to offer loads of grip. And if it gets muddy, the mud should shed really well as well. Uh, this sort of thing is also to narrow a fit. So you want a, a good precise fit. So when you're, you're running up down hills, traversing across, your foot's not slopping um, left and right. You want your foot held really well. And it's usually slightly lower to the ground, so it's not really maximum, maximum stack sort of shoe. So uh, slightly lower to the ground is just going to give you better ground control as well when you're running in those conditions. Uh, some shoes as well. Uh, some shoes will offer... So these have actually got little metal um, tips to them as well. So this one's designed for running in snow and ice. So aggressive treads and also with the little metal um, tips as well. So stop you from slipping. There's lots of different depths of lugs um, to offer different levels of grip. So these ones here, they are kind of in between, in, in the middle of the range. So you get the super aggressive lugs for like so fell running and then you select traditional trail running shoe as uh, much shallower lugs. Uh, so these ones are kind of in, in the middle so uh, the, depth, the depth of these lugs I'll put up on the screen uh, and they're, they're spaced out fairly well so they should shed mud pretty well but not to the same level as the fell shoes but if you're going to buy one shoe to do so like everything a jack of all trades sort of shoe then these sort of things should do the job well so trail shoes will have shallower lugs and they'll be closer to gather as well uh, to offer more um, contact with the ground. Yes, some shoes which are classed as <clears throat> pardon me, uh, door to trail shoes as well. So door to trail shoe. Again, shallower lugs, doesn't need to be overly aggressive. This sort of shoe you're going to be running um, from the house along the road to get to a trail. So depending on where you go. Most people run from the home. So most people run from the house and they don't have a trail on their doorstep. So they've got to do some amount on some tarmac. So a door to trail sort of shoe is good for ticking that sort of box. Since they were talking about different types of shoes, <clears throat> ultra shoes, they'll generally have a not overly aggressive tread to them. Uh, so they'll be it's good grip, but it won't be uh, super aggressive because you're going to be running in them for a long time so, and if you've got a really knobbly lug um, it's going to be uncomfortable if you're running in it for a long time. The fit on an ultra shoe as well is generally much wider in the forefoot. Uh, this will allow your feet to spread out uh, when you've been on your feet a long time. Your feet will get hot, they'll swell. Um, some people, <clears throat> some people when they're doing multi-day events um, they'll even change into a, a bigger size shoe because their feet have swollen up that much they can go up a size, or even two sizes. So cushioning. Uh, so a shoe with less, less cushioning is usually more of a feely sort of shoe. So when I'm saying that, you can, you can generally tell when you have um, lower cushioning or barefoot sort of shoes, you can really feel what you're running on. You can, feel uh, the terrain and you can adapt really quickly and some people like to have a feely sort of shoe whereas you can go to the other stream and have a shoe with loads of cushioning 
like that, it's got tons of cushioning, but then that can help you um, help your aging joints, knees. Lots of people will get something like this uh, if they're going to be running for a long time and they just want some um, relief and forgiveness. And if you're out for a long time with a very minimal shoe, um, your feet can get tired a bit quicker. So more cushioning usually um, gives you a bit more, I don't know, relief when you're running. So it depends on where you're running and what your personal choice is as well. Um, some people swear by maximum cushioning and other people really don't get along with it. So remember, everyone's different. It's just finding something that works for you. So with cushioning, uh, remember, if you're gonna be running on rough terrain, you're gonna want something slightly lower to the ground to offer you more reactability. Reactability? Yeah, that's, you get what I mean. Or if you're gonna be running on uh, for a long time on hard packed trails, you may want some extra cushioning uh, just to get a bit of extra forgiveness. So you might come across the term pronation control. Um, so pronation control you get on road running shoes. Um, you don't really get that on trail shoes and I'll explain why. So most folk will have some sort of over pronation um, in their feet. So basically their feet uh, will roll inwards slightly. And some folk, uh, less people, but some people will roll outwards slightly. Not quite to these extremes, but you get what I mean. Uh, now on road shoes, they can put in a denser type of foam. This isn't a road shoe, but just to point out. So on this kind of section here, they can use a denser foam, which will help help reduce the roll outwards or inwards. But on trail shoes, your feet are doing this. So you're running along and on a road shoe, every single step is exactly the same. Uh, you're on the tarmac, so it's flat and it's a repetitive um, motion that your feet are doing. On a trail, your feet are doing this constantly. They're having to adapt because your feet are running on different surfaces. So due to that, um, you don't get um, pronation control in trail shoes. So another term you may come across is the drop. So the drop is the difference between your heel and your toe height. So basically, if you take your shoes off now and go running around the, the living room, uh, grass, out wherever, uh, when you run, you'll be running with zero drop. Uh, your feet have no correction to them. The, the, you're just running on your bare feet. And when you do that, you'll be running on your forefoot um, towards your toes, because you naturally don't want to have your heel banging onto the floor. So take your shoes off and go and have a, a wee run about and you'll see that that's what you do. Now that style of running doesn't suit everyone when they have shoes on. So most trail shoes will have a bit of a ramp of an angle in the in the shoes. So meaning um, the heel, here we go, let's grab a shoe. Uh, the heel will be higher up than the forefoot of the toes. So you'll have slight slight ramp. So that's the drop of the shoe. Everyone's different, that's a huge topic. And loads of people will swear blind, this is the right way and that's the right way. Pretty much. Everyone is different. If that works for this person and something else works for that person, that's fine. As long as you find what works for you, then that's the, that's the best way. So usually the higher the angle, the more chance you've got of heel striking or midfoot striking. And the lower the angle, the more you've got of forefoot um, striking. So when you run, it's finding out how you run. It seems like an odd question, but you might go into a shop and you might get asked, um, how do you run? And most people will say, I don't know, I just run. And you don't think about these sort of things. But next time you, you go out for a run, just think about where your feet are landing. Are you landing on your toes when you're running? Or are you landing on your heel? If you're doing a shorter, um, speedier session, you'll probably be running off your toes more. 
Whereas if you've been out for a 30 mile run and you're absolutely knackered, odds are you'll be landing on your heel because form's gone out the window and you're just tired. So if you're used to running in a zero drop shoe, uh, you probably already know about it. And then you'll probably be looking at a shoe between like zero and four mil drop. Um, again, this is just a guide. Uh, if you are listening to this and thinking, what on earth is he talking about? What to drop? Then I'd maybe try something slightly, slightly higher uh, to start with. So you, you pretty much get different. Um, let me see how am I trying to word this? You get shoes between so like zero and four mil, which will suit someone who runs on the four foot mall. Uh, then. In the middle range, you will get something like a five to an eight mil drop, and that may suit someone who runs in the midfoot. So they're not running quite so much off the toes, so they're more landing in the middle of the feet, which will be a huge amount of people out there. And then you'll get um, people that do land on the heel, and there's nothing wrong with that. Well, some people will say there is, but let's not get into that. If you land on a heel, you're probably going to be looking at a drop between like 9 and 12 mil. So if you run in or you, you just start running in a zero drop shoe and you're not used to it, um, take it easy. Don't go out for a really big long mega run uh, if you're not used to it because you may find because your heel is dropping down slightly lower you might get some calf or um, Achilles um, pressure, a bit of strain. So like with everything if you're not used to it gradually build into it. So start off with some shorter runs and progressively make them longer. Listen to your body basically. So don't get overly obsessed with the drop. Um, some places may not even mention it, um, but I'm just making you aware of it. Um, not all brands even measure the drop the same way. Gore-Tex. Should you um, buy your trail shoe with a Gore-Tex liner? So Gore-Tex is a waterproof liner. So there are some points where Gore-Tex would be good if you're running through some um, short grass uh, or running in the winter. Um, short grass, it'll help um, keep your feet dry. If you're doing a park run, that sort of thing, uh, that could be a good option for you. And in the winter, um, it can actually make your feet slightly warmer as well. Generally though, don't bother getting Gore-Tex in your trail shoes. If you're running on a trail or off trail, uh, as I say, this is meaning multitude of different types of um, types of running in shoes, just we're steering clear of road running. So if you're running off road on trails, um, a lot of the time you'll be running through longer grass, you'll be running through puddles, even streams. You'll, you'll be going all over the place. And if you're doing that and you've got a Gore-Tex shoe, then water will get in and it's got no way of getting out. So it'll take forever to dry out. Also, if uh, it's hot, um, your feet won't breathe as well. I know Gore-Tex is breathable, but it's not as breathable as nothing there at all. So most of the time, I've got loads, loads of trail shoes. Uh, I've only got one pair which Gore-Tex and all the others don't have Gore-Tex in them. I actually quite like getting my feet wet. So when I'm out for a run and I get my feet wet, it usually makes me smile because I think I'm actually out, I'm alive, I'm doing something, it's, it's fun. Also, if your feet do get wet uh, when you're running, uh, you've been through a stream or you, you've just got wet feet, as you're running, uh, your feet will, with the motion, it'll pump the water out and they'll dry quickly, uh, they'll be much more breathable, and they're just more comfortable to run in. So what sort of shoes do you run in? Uh, do you run in a mixture of the shoes we've covered, or have you just got one shoe that you'll use as a one shoe does everything? So leave a comment below. Uh, thanks very much for watching, uh, really appreciate it and I'll see you next Monday.